It's been a while since we had a new open weight model that was really worth diving into. It just kind of feels like the Frontier Labs are the ones pushing things right now. And historically, they have been. They have a ton of money and resources and all the other things they need, but they also charge accordingly. I miss the days where DeepSeek came in and shook up the whole industry. And while we're not in one of those moments right now, it does feel like we're really close because the ZAI guys have been cooking. I am genuinely really impressed with what they've been doing on many different levels. On one hand, they're an incredible lab, making models that are scoring super well on various benchmarks. But on the other hand, they seem to understand and care about product a lot more than the other Chinese labs. While they're putting this out, DeepSeek is putting out yet another weird version of DeepSeek V3 focused on their sparse attention methods. DeepSeek's a research lab through and through. They're so bad at software development that they inspired me to make T3 chat because I hated using their chat interface so much. Whereas with ZAI, the first link's the API, then the next link is their subscriptions, which you might remember previously when I did the video on how to make Claude code way cheaper with ZAI. The model just got way better than it was then, and now it's beating out legit things. Like it has a good win rate against Claude Sonnet 4, which is kind of crazy. There is so much to dive into here. I am genuinely hyped. ZAI has been cooking, and we might finally have a cheap, reasonable alternative to using Claude models. According to Kilo Code, 48.6% win rate against Claude Sonnet 4. So it's like neck and neck with Sonnet 4 for one fifth or less the price. For output tokens, it's like one eighth. It's insane. <laughs> This is a really cool model with a lot to dig into. I can't wait to try it myself and show you guys more. No way I complain about token costs, but it's cheap enough. I don't have much to worry about here. That said, we do have bills to pay. Quick word from today's sponsor, and then we'll dive right in. Adding AI to your apps has never been easier, but making it useful is way harder than I would have ever imagined. If you're trying to make it so users can access things from other services like, you know, Google Drive, Notion, Slack, or even Salesforce, getting the integration set up right is nearly impossible. And then actually making it so the AI can find what it's looking for from those sources without just bloating its context and getting super dumb and expensive, you're not going to pull it off. Believe me, I've tried. And that's how I stumbled on Raggy. These guys really get it. They are rag as a service, but it goes so much deeper than that. You know that service Plaid that lets you sign in with your bank information to any other place when you want to link your bank account to something? You can almost think of Raggy like that, but for your data. So if you're building a service and you want your users to be able to index and bring in their Google Drive information, their Slack messages, or basically any source that you could ever imagine, Raggy will make it easy for them to sign in, index the data for you, and now your AI has the tools it needs and the data it needs to answer questions about all of that. And the level of depth they went to with this is genuinely crazy. Things get really crazy when you start adding audio and video, which they will not only index for you, but they will find spots like actual timestamps and stream that back to you. Here's an example where Raggy was used to find scenes with hard hats from a random set of videos, and it was able to stream in the exact timestamp and location with metadata and information where this moment happened in the video. Do you know how much work it is to build this type of stuff yourself? I have. It's not fun. And the fact that they are so cheap makes it even crazier. All of their tiers offer unlimited retrievals, which is crazy. And the actual ingest processing is pretty good too. Only two cents per page of data and five cents if you want to do the high res version of that. Two cents per minute of video is insane for processing too. Like there is so much stuff you can build with this. And it makes me want to add integrations on T3Chat like right now. Seriously, this platform is so cool. The team's been awesome to work with. They are huge fans of us and everything we do here. If you're looking for a product that solves these problems and deeply understands our expectations as full stack TypeScript nerds, there's no better place to look than Raggy. Check them out now at soydev.link slash Raggy. GLM 4.6, Advanced Agentic Reasoning and Coding Capabilities. Today, we're releasing the latest version of our flagship model. Compared with 4.5, this generation brings several key improvements. Longer context windows up to 200k tokens, superior coding performance. The model achieves higher scores on code benchmarks and demonstrates better real world performance in apps like Claude Code, Klein, Rue Code, and Kilo Code. You might be confused about why they put Claude Code here. It's because they published a pretty solid guide and set of scripts so that you can use Claude Code with their models. Since you can set Claude Code to hit a different endpoint, you can use it to hit their endpoint, and then they crafted their endpoint to be as close as possible to the official Claude Code one so you could use it with Claude code. It's also much better at reasoning and it supports tool use during reasoning and inference, which leads to stronger overall capabilities. Also as a more capable agent, GLM 4.6 exhibits stronger performance in tool use and search-based agents and integrates more effectively within agent frameworks. And it's better at writing too. Cool. Let's look at these benchmarks. In AIME, it's beating out Sonnet 4.5 even, which is crazy. G 
GPQA is losing to Sonnet 5 or 4.5, but beating out Sonnet 4. Live Code Bench, it's crushing. HLE, it's crushing. T2 Bench, it's doing pretty well. Better than 4, worse than 4.5. You get the idea. The only thing they're really losing against Anthropic Models in is SWE Bench Verified, but it's still fucking neck and neck. They're doing very good here. Sadly, we don't have my favorite set of benchmarks, the artificial analysis charts for this just yet, but we can see that 4.5 did perform pretty well before. There's so much junk in here that I don't give a shit about. Yeah, it's been so long since a llama model mattered at all. I'm getting rid of Gemini. They haven't been good for a bit. Excited for Gemini to catch up, but right now is not the time. Opus is effectively a dead model series now. Mistral is effectively a dead company now. R10528, yeah, not really useful at this point. It is interesting to see that with DeepSeek V3.1 to 3.2, that 3.2 performs slightly worse, but it's also way cheaper and easier to run due to their new weird techniques. Uh, da -da. Now we have a more reasonable set of things. And you'll see GLM 4.5 doesn't necessarily perform great when you compare it to like GPT-5 on minimal or Kimi K2, but it's performing decently. And if we look at code benchmarks like we have here, 4.5 is up there with 3.1, beats out Quen 3 Max, beats out Grok 4 fast even, but it's still not close to the best like GPT-5 codecs and whatnot. 4.6 appears to be meaningful improvements compared to 4.5 according to their own numbers, significant depending on the bench. Like Live Code Bench, it's crushing their previous implementation. Well, what really matters is win rates against other models. So here we have 4.6 versus Claude Sonnet 4, which is asking people or an AI, which of these solutions is better? 4.6 is winning 48.6% of the time against Sonnet 4. Sonnet beats GLM 4.6 42%, and then there's a 9.5% draw rate. So GLM 4.6 is actually performing better than Claude Sonnet 4 here. It's also performing better than 4.5 for GLM models. So these numbers are always hard to read into because it's kind of crazy when you think about it, that 4.5 of a model is beating 4.6 sometimes. That is the nature of things. It's fucking crushing Kimmy, though. The one of the coolest parts, though, and I'm talking more about this, token usage. It is using way fewer tokens per request than DeepSeek is or Kemi is, and it's gone down from their previous model. It's nice to see labs focusing on their token over usage and trying to trim it. That's all cool, but I want to actually try this out. I checked various different code agents. Uh, OpenCode doesn't have it yet. I don't feel like breaking and resetting up my Claude code again, as fun as it is. What I really want to test this out with is Kilo code. It's already built in. Kilo code is a sponsor. They're not sponsoring this video. They're just general channel sponsors. I'm excited to see how it behaves with the latest model here. Gave it the same prompt I was using before, which is demonstrating the new activity API, which is a fun challenge because this isn't information they would have trained on because it's a new API just added to React. So it has to be able to search the web to find more information about this. It's cool to see things update like this. I was just using an ancient version of Kilo and it half failed. Now that I am on the latest version, it looks way better. It's calling tools way better. It's using a to-do list. Oh, this is actually really good. Kilo is not sponsoring this video. They've just sponsored them in the past. I don't even think we have any pending sponsorship stuff right now, but it's good. Let it run the command. This kind of just feels like faster Claude so far in a lot of ways. In the directory, it's writing a bunch of code. It's fucking fast. What are the TPS numbers they're seeing for this on open router? The official ZAI API is doing it at 85 TPS, which makes it the fastest of this tier of model by quite a bit. Deep Infra is only hitting 30 TPS and their uptime is garbage. Parasail is way slower at 20-ish TPS and their uptime is fine. So it seems like ZAI is the best host by far right now. I'm excited to see others hosting it because it is an open weight model. And I honestly, I can already say just seeing this, this model is definitely underrated right now. I had a couple people I trust DMing me saying that this model's cracked and I really need to check it out. I don't just do these one-off open weight model videos otherwise because there's so many of them. But this one does feel different. This is hitting harder than I expected. Ooh, bad tool call. What happened here? It's running things in parallel right here by the looks of it. It's editing multiple files at once. While that's running, there are other things I wanted to cover. Again, Kilo Code covered this well here. The real story here isn't benchmarks. It's practical performance. 4.6 maintains coherence across multi-file operations where other models typically hallucinate functions or lose context. At $3 a month for their GLM coding plan, it's cheaper than your streaming service. Here's what smart orchestration looks like. You use Claude or GPT-4 for architecture and complex planning. You wrote implementation work to GLM 4.6, and you save 50 to 100x on costs for routine coding tasks. 
Even if it handles just 80% of your workload, the return on investment here is obvious. ZAI also did something unusual here. They published all their test questions and agent trajectories on Hugging Face. You can verify their claims yourself. See the actual code that GLM 4.6 generated, where it succeeded and where it struggled. Transparency is way better than marketing benchmarks. I totally agree. They have been really weirdly transparent and nice to work with. Like of the recent labs, ZAI was one of the first to like DM me and make sure I had what I needed in order to do good coverage. They went out of their way to like involve me early. They've been awesome to work with and chat with, and they've been super transparent about things too. Six months ago, frontier level coding AI meant frontier level prices. Today, models like GLM 4.6 are closing the gap fast. From Opus losing relevance due to Sonnet 4.5 to GPT-5 dropping at a relatively cheap price without some crazy expensive higher tier like we all expected, to now GLM 4.6 heavily closing that gap and beating out Claude 4 and GPT-4 for way cheaper is crazy. These are legitimate alternatives that handle most coding tasks at a fraction of the cost. Save the premium models for the truly complex things. Use efficient models for everything else. What is this video they're linking? I'm very curious. Oh, AI Code King. Yeah, he actually was one of the ones who DM'd me saying, this model's different. You should really pay attention. I can't believe I'm not subscribed. I'm going to turn on notifications for him because his channel has been awesome. Also, congrats, AI Code King, on breaking 100K. Very well deserved. Models that were unthinkable at this price point six months ago are available now for the cost of a coffee. That changes the economics of AI system development entirely. This won't be your favorite model overnight, but at $3 a month through their coding plan, it's pretty absurdly cheap. Anyway, let's see how it did here. It is finished generating this. Let's run the code. And here we are, the demo it created. Seems like it's infinite looping a render. Kind of funny. I will tell it it's doing that and see how it fixes it. While that's going, I'm going to do a quick open code run using same model. Back for my activity demo, I asked it to fix the constant re-rendering bug, and it did almost immediately. That's actually cool. It made a nice, solid UI, fell for the making a bunch of cards at the bottom. It has a very different style than I normally see from these models. I'm actually really excited now to see how this open code run goes using the model to do the, the classic, the fake image studio. Definitely not the fastest solution for this. I was hoping there would be better examples around of using smarter models like Claude or GPT-5 to solve problems at like a higher level and then have GLM 4.6 go in and do the majority of the coding tasks at a fraction of the cost. I'm not finding examples anywhere of people doing this. I know what it would look like, but I don't know any existing tools that have this implemented particularly well just yet, which is a shame because it'll be really cool once they do. What I'm imagining here is something along the lines of like the to-do list that we saw being created earlier when I ran this. Or even now, if we hop into my open code runner, you can see if we go up far enough, we have the to-do list where it's going to initialize the project, set it up with the basic layout, create dark mode and global theme, design and implement. You can imagine a world where a lot of that work is done by a more expensive, fancier model like Claude 4.5 Sonnet or GPT-5, it plans out the to-do list, maybe even describes a bit more in detail what each of those tasks are and what they look like. And then it spins up a coding agent to actually go in under the hood and do those things. That's already kind of what happens. The to-do list is looked at and then a sub agent is spawned to go do each of those tasks and report back when it's done. Having those sub agents using a different model than the top level agent makes a ton of sense. Claude code kind of does this the other way where they have a cheaper model that will go look for information and try to help the more expensive model know what to do right. They'll use Haiku for a bunch of analysis of data in the repo and then let Sonnet do the work after. I could see a future where we have another layer on top that is the expensive model figuring out what to do and the cheaper models go do the actual details. Super exciting stuff. It appears to be going much further into this demo app than others do, like they're implementing Zoom and things. Curious to see how far it goes and what the results end up looking like. We are like five plus minutes into this run now. So it's not the fastest model. It puts out tokens pretty quick and it feels fast when you're watching it edit in your editor for that reason. But it also seems to go a lot further with the generation work it's doing, which can result in it not being the fastest solution, but also going a bit further. Just found a fun bug in open code. This generating should be animating but apparently probably due to some layers between my ghosty implementation as well as with Tmux, 
I'll never leave Tmux. You'll pull it out of my cold, dead hands. This animation doesn't happen unless I click. And every click, you'll see I get an updated frame. Kind of funny. What's going on, guys? I want to see the output. It appears to be stuck. As I think about this, I'm imagining a UI that's a bit different from what we have today. Imagine you have your main agent model in something like Cursor. Here we have 4.5 Sonnet Max mode. Maybe that's our default. It would be really cool if we could have another little drop down here or a setting somewhere. That lets us pick a different model for the subtasks that are created once you do a run. When you tell it, I want this, go implement it, and it describes what it has in mind, then it can have those sub-agents run with a different cheaper model to help reduce your costs a ton. Because running one of these big models over giant amounts of context over and over again can get really expensive. But if you have a good enough plan, the dumber models can go do it. You can almost think of this kind of like a traditional engineering team. You need somebody who knows things well enough to do the higher level planning to make sure every like task is cut properly and that the overall structure and direction of the project is in the right direction. And then you can have less aware engineers doing the implementation details of those given tickets. It's always a good idea to have somebody who really gets shit do that top level planning first. And the idea of having sub selection of dumber models that are way cheaper to do these other tasks is really cool. And I wish more of these tools were built with that instead of the tool just using one model for everything for a given run. And the more I think about it, the only tool I know of that is really good about using different models for different things, funny enough, is Claude Code. Because Claude models are so expensive, they had to take advantage of cheaper Claude models like, you know, Haiku in order to make the product viable at all. But as far as I know, none of these tools have this functionality. Even things like Kilo Code, who are actively talking about this idea of like using different models for different parts of the work, they don't have this implemented yet, at least as far as I know. Let me check settings and see if they have anything for this. I'd be very surprised if they did. Yep. They don't. Apparently, it's spitting out invalid JSX. That's fun. Like, I genuinely feel as though the pain I'm experiencing right now is because the tools have not caught up for this. And I'm seeing more why the major labs are putting so much effort into things like Claude Code and Codex, because you get so much value out of owning that and making sure the experience with your model is just right. I've seen a lot of speculation around businesses building these things, saying, well, you can just swap the model. It's not that big a deal. These tools aren't that complex. They shouldn't be that complex. But I'm seeing a lot of random shit like this happening that is causing problems for a lot of people. Well, supposedly, it's now done, and it just wants to test the complete app. I'll go check out localhost 3000, see what it did. Finally, well, uh, this actually looks better than what I would normally get out of Claude. There are weird things, like the header sucks, but this is like a starting point. It's actually pretty good. I like the gradient. I don't like the hover behavior. It's hilarious that it just it hit a client-side exception. Oh, this is just because it doesn't have in the next config for the mock image. Annoying, but happens. There's a ton of potential here. That much is clear. The benchmarks show it. The quality of that UI by default shows it. The hype that lots of other companies have around the model shows it especially well. Will I be using this model every day? Not yet. But would I use a tool that uses this model as one of the main solutions for these types of problems? Absolutely. I would love for the Claude parity claim here to not just be its quality of code and benchmarks can be similar to Claude, but the quality of experience you get using it is too. There's absolutely the potential for it to get there, but I'm not seeing that potential just yet. Very excited to see where this all goes. There's more reason now than ever to have multiple models solving a problem in tandem together. The models don't know other models are doing different parts. They have no idea. All they have is text in, text out. I want to see more companies take advantage of this. I want to see GPT-5 spinning up sub-agents using these cheaper models and see what the results look like. If somebody ends up building that tool and makes it easy for me to try, I would love to give it a shot and use it for future videos. But for now, I just have to stare at my open code terminal, very slowly failing, running into tons of issues, and then 25 plus minutes later, having an actual answer, kind of. Ugh. They're trying so hard to reduce costs while also increasing intelligence, and that's an important thing for us as an industry to strive for. I can't wait to see what people do with this model, and I'm excited for the future of tooling people will build around models like it, but for now, it's not quite what I would use. 
Let me know what you guys think. And until next time, peace nerds.